That's Harden and Pendande. Let's roll the ball out there and get it going in the evening session of the ACC tournament. Now we know how good Louisville's defense is. They're an up the line, overplaying, deny one pass away. Miami's going to have to ball fake. They're going to have to have dribble entries, high post entries to try to relieve some of that pressure and look to go back door. First meeting at the tournament between these two programs. The opening possession belongs to Louisville and White. Miami in the orange as the number seven seed at our ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. Louisville went 16-2 and in conference play, coming off a win last Sunday at Notre Dame, 86-64. Van Lith with the shot clock at 10. Escape dribble, comes up short. Engstler kept it alive, and Louisville's on the board. Emily Engstler has 70 offensive rebounds and 70 steals. That's what I was trying to say about her. <laughs> Those are some big numbers. Louisville's won three in a row and 11 of their last 12. Miami's won six of its last seven. And Dunde gets swallowed up inside and Louisville gets the ball back. And Kiana Smith was playing Kelsey Marshall to no catch in the corner. So they're going to face guard Marshall who leaves them in scoring. He's their only player in double figures. <laughs> Officials for our game for Ronnie Spurlock Welsh, Mark Resch, and Rod Creech. In charge of the action in game three on day three, quarterfinal Friday. Virginia Tech and NC State, number one seed, have advanced already in the early session. Harden for the mid range. Knocked around, Pendande bounces out. Second chance, Cochran comes away. Good Smith. In transition. That's a set play in transition by Jeff Rothstein. Area Vets with the handoff. Elsie Marshall, the veteran player, the steadying presence for these Canes. Pendande found inside. So now time for the four keys of the game with Debbie Antonelli. Well, Tom, here's the deal for Miami. No live ball turnovers. Louisville is plus five in their turnover margin, and they have tremendous team speed going the other way. And for the Cardinals, they need to make the extra pass, move the ball, get an open shot, make Miami chase a pass to a pass and a half late. And Dande had 11 points yesterday against Duke, was three or four from the free throw line, and did not miss a field goal attempt. She was four for four. Also pulled down four rebounds, had a couple of assists. Throw a block in there as well for good measure for Pendante. Miami picking up some full court pressure. We expect to see that after made free throws. What you're trying to do here is just make Louisville go a little deeper into their options, not necessarily trying to take a risky play and try to make a steal. Paul give it off to Van Lith. It's a two. Yeah, Haley Van Lith has been playing her best basketball at the right time. Struggled at the beginning of the season, didn't shoot the ball as well, had some issues scoring, but not now. That's part of the reason why she's a first-team All-ACC guard. Louisville takes back possession. Van Lith 11th in the conference in scoring. Katie Meyer, the head coach for the Canes, and her season snapshot in her 17th year as Miami basketball celebrates 50 years of the women's program and trying to get by the number two seed. Smith misses. Knocked around, saved. That was Cochran who went to the deck. They get it back to Exler. Williams on the handle. To Harden for the layup. Nice job by Harden. Keep moving off the penetration. Play off the drive by Williams. Destiny Harden, the graduate student from Chicago, Illinois. At 13 points and eight rebounds in the regular season meeting between the teams. She's into the box score. We'll stay at this end of the floor. Watch Destiny Harden right here come into the picture. Williams is almost out of bounds. And Harden stays active and follows the penetration into the lane for a bucket.
Shot clock to three. Van Lith drops it off. Cochran misses in tight. Now Marshall. Area that's trying to run under it and save it. And somehow saves it to Williams. Deflected out of bounds by Hall to her own bench. Jeff Walls, 15th season as the Cards head coach. See the role that they're on as they come to the tournament. Projected to be a number one seed of the NCAA tournament. They are 7-0 and in the quarterfinals of our tournament. Yeah, there's no question Lula and NC State are number one seeds regardless of the outcome of this event. They both have already earned it, and Destiny Harden carrying that hot hand over from last night. Harden was 4 of 11 from the floor yesterday. 3 of 3 from the line, had 9 rebounds. Thanksler. Van Lith sneaks in. Smith just inside the free throw line, uses all the rim. There's Cochran with a follow and a foul. Yeah, Olivia Cochran is going to seek offensive rebounds. She's tremendous. I'm not going to call her Oscar Cheatway from Kentucky, but she's pretty darn close. Watch Harden right here. You're trying to get to the nail. This is what defenses are designed to do, keep you out of that ACC logo area, but that's exactly where you want to go with the ball. Harden, who averaged 7.1 points per game in the regular season, stepping up her play in the postseason with Cochran at the free throw line. Here's the subtle things about Cochran that I love. I mean, she's going to the glass every time, and she's elusive because she seeks the ball. She doesn't just try to go to one spot. She reads. The other thing is her sprint up the floor, her first three steps are bang, bang, bang. She gets into their transition game, and because she runs so hard, she opens up space on the floor for the guards. 74% free throw shooter, Olivia Cochran, the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. And they're taking a look at area vets on the Miami bench. She had a great save at the other end after a long pass. But right now being attended to on that Miami bench, and we'll keep an eye on that as Gray brings it up for the Kings. Defeating Duke yesterday, 61-55. They shot 44% as a team. Harden was a big reason why. Able to squeeze that one up. It is off of Harden. Fighting with Engstler for the loose ball. That's a tough matchup to keep your eye on because those are two tough competitors, Harden and Emily Engstler. And Engstler's going to get a breather. Engstler, the senior from New York City. A transfer from Syracuse. This would be the small lineup on the floor for Jeff Walls. He's got four guards and Liz Dixon. Miami goes to zone. Programs meeting for the tenth time overall. Louisville has a 7-2 lead in the previous nine meetings. Whistle and foul. Kelsey Marshall has picked up her first personal foul. Liz Dixon at the free throw line. If you don't keep the ball in front and you keep putting pressure on that second row for Miami, that's going to get them in some foul trouble. They don't have as much depth up front. Dixon, 80% from the stripe during the regular season. Only had 30 attempts all year. First taste of the tourney for the Louisville Cardinals. Back in 2018, they tasted victory at this championship, defeating Notre Dame 74-72. That year, they won 36 games. Steal inside. Like a defensive back. Gianna Smith gives it up. That's Hall. It'll stay down. It's a three. Aldi Tomby had to send it back out. Inside of five minutes to go in our first quarter. It's a four-point advantage for Louisville, the number two seed. Into the corner and gray. Out of the corner and gray. Not enough on it. Van Lith trying to tightrope the baseline. And she stepped on the line. So it will be Miami basketball when we come back. Destiny Harden 
the Miami Hurricanes knocking down the jumper. Van Lint sends it right back at him. Our journey at Continental. The new Spicy Lover's Pizza from Pizza Hut. Seasons and the WNBA, where she was drafted in the first round to the Detroit Shock. Tom? Fantastic lineage. Wow, we understand why she is so talented. Oh, she played for the Hall of Famer, Joe Champy. And Joe Champy's son-in-law is on Jeff Wall's bench. That's Sam Purcell. There's a good shot of Sam. He's a great young head. Going to be a head coach one day. Wait a minute now. Should be soon. <laughs> Should be soon. There's a couple jobs open. Great work by Sam and all of the assistants for the schools involved in our tournament. They do so much work behind the scenes. Getting these student athletes prepared for competition. Gray on the inbounds. And Bandu is in there for Miami. 35 in orange. Four and a half minutes to go in our first quarter. Knocked away. Angsler had it. Liz Dixon with the two dribble rule. That just never looked right for Louisville well, coming up the court. They like to play fast, right? And they're coming downhill. And they kind of tilt the floor. But Liz Dixon was right. You know, two dribbles, that's enough. You got to give it back to a guard. Jeff Walls would be okay with that turnover because he's trying to force tempo. But you can't make the same mistake twice. Not if you're playing for Jeff Walls, you can't. Most wins in school history, 410 in 2018. Coach of the year in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Jeff Walls. Well, they were also a number one seed in the NCAA tournament in 2018 and 19, and they produce a steal. Picasso Robinson with a pick. One of the best blue players, defensive players in the ACC. Marshall's picked up her second. I call Mikasa Robinson a right side of the box score player. She might not score any points, but she'll have an impact on the game because she'll get assists and steals. She'll rebound. She'll set screens. She runs the floor hard. She does all those things. A lot of those nods to that thing, too. Is that the Antonelli side of the box score? No, no, no. I'm on the <laughs> other side. I want to shoot till my arm falls okay, off. Are good. you kidding? All right. I don't want to play any defense. Just checking. So Marshall picks up her second. Cochran, by the way, the last two years, part of the all-defensive team in the ACC. Van Lith had nowhere to go. Angular rebound to Mbandu. That's America's play right there. That would have been a beautiful telestration if she made it. Maybe we can make that happen. We'll see. Gray can make it happen on the other end. Miami. The box score. Look, they got confidence. They only lost by three points when they played last time in Coral Gables. And Louisville had to make some plays to come to be able to pull that win off, out on the road. Kia Gray playing with a lot of confidence. She made a couple of threes yesterday. A couple of nice winning plays for Miami for head coach Katie Meyer. Gray only shot 29% from beyond the arc in the regular season. But this is a different setting. Dixon at the free throw line for Louisville. As a team, they are fifth in the conference from the line, 71%. Three points for Dixon in our first quarter. Full court pressure. Louisville always picks you up full court. And it's the constant wear down of having to handle and make decisions under duress. Miami avenged that regular season loss against Duke with its win in the second round yesterday of our tournament. And Bondu twisting to the rim. So Miami staying aggressive. And Bondu had just two points yesterday against Duke. She's already equaled that with that interior bucket. Angsler around the edge, fumbled the ball momentarily, and then traveled. Watching Bandu go to work right here. Attack to close out. Go rim body ball. See how she left her, put her body between the defender and the basket? That was a good move inside. Naomi Mbandu, the senior, 6'2", from France. Junior college transfer. In fact, she won a national championship at the junior college level. Trying to slip it inside. 
Louisville playing some zone in that possession. Good change by Jeff Walls. Roberts couldn't get to that one on the baseline, and it's turned over back to Louisville. Talked about no live ball turnovers. Miami has five so far. We've referenced that regular season meeting between the teams. That was in early February. 15 lead changes and five ties. Dixon, jumper. I think you take that if you're Katie Meyer. You know, you're trying to protect inside out. It's not one of the guards making one of those shots. One possession game, and Bondu spins it in. It's two for two. She averages three and a half points per game. That's what she did during the regular season. She's got four right now. Miami shooting 50% as a team. And that one rattles home for Smith. Second leading scorer on this team, Kiana Smith. Almost 12 points per game in the regular season. Chalde Tabdi traveled. Yeah, Miami did recognize the zone once again. And Tabdi Tabdi shuffles her feet. Dixon calling for the ball. And then watch Mbondu again doing a nice job getting into the space of the zone. Ball fake. She's in the gap. Turn and shoot that. Cardinals have won seven of the last eight meetings between these two teams. Again, they're meeting for the first time at the ACC tournament. This Louisville program's gone to the finals three times since joining the conference for the 13-14 season. Kick from Mbondu. Look at Mbondu, how active she is on the defensive end as well. Looking to help and dig on the post, recovering back to her player getting a deflection she should be enthused at both ends she's already scored four points for miami playing active defense at the other end trying to check angstler lifts it to dixon the dribble goes out of bounds jaldi tabdi closed defensively on the baseline for yeah, miami that was a nice job by jaldi jaldi told me to rotate out Maeva Jaldi Tanti, 33 in orange, graduate student from Paris, France, 6'4", transfer from Syracuse. First year in the Miami program, and her pass goes out of bounds. Jaldi Tanti and Mbandu trying to collaborate. The other aspect of Louisville's defense that we're seeing on the, having an impact on Miami's offense is they're, they're playing so quickly. No, they're in a hurry to do everything. Louisville's shooting 36% as a team below their season average of 46%, second best in the ACC. Three second violation was called. Fifth turnover for Louisville. Haynes have made five of their last seven field goals. They've also turned it over five times as well. Trying to find that happy medium. And stay tight to the number two seed. Gray lining up a three. Dixon high for the rebound. Just eight seconds on the clock. Hall. Ran into Gray. Foul goes against Miami. That's her second. So now Gray and Marshall both have two personals. Yeah, no question. You got to referee the defense. That's a good call. Coach Meyer gave no resistance to that. So just 3.4 seconds on the clock. And that will put Hall at the free throw line. Graduate student, Boca Raton, Florida. Had 10 points in that close win at Miami in the regular season and canned a couple of three-pointers for Chelsea Hall. She's got seven points in the first quarter. 
of the 17. Williams did not get it away. Would not have counted. Five point difference into the first, Debbie Antonelli. Get them. Yeah, big win in overtime by Virginia Tech. Down two starters, and Kenny Brooks' team finds a way. NC State rolls over Florida State. And we got a tight one right here, a five-point game with Louisville, the number four team in the country. And again, don't forget, this is just game one of the evening session. We've got Notre Dame and Georgia Tech to come. Exler on the left, Van Lith on the right, combining for two points, Debbie Antonelli? Yeah, well, they're just getting warmed up. Okay. And you got to give some credit to Miami. They're long and athletic. They're physical. They're tough-minded on the defensive end. All right, let's check in with Tabitha. Well, guys, in that last huddle, Jeff Waltz told his team, stop passing up good shots to get spectacular shots. And that's when he focused on Kiana Smith and said, be shot ready. Now, before the game, guys, Jeff Waltz told me that the focus has been on the dynamic duo of Van Lith and Inksler. But he sang Kiana Smith's praises and said she's our second leading scorer and she's a big reason that we've been successful this season. Tom? He was kind of disappointed that she was not uh, named a first team all ACC guard. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the first team in the ACC, only three first team players from NC State and Louisville. I mean, these are two number one seeds that both have Final Four capabilities. I'm just a little surprised in the voting. That one rattles out for Alana Smith. Early moments of our second quarter. So glad that you're with us. Tom Wormy, Debbie Antonelli, Tabitha Turner Wilkins, Evan Leckler will take you to our halftime activities. And Hildreth, the China Robinson took you through the first two games of our third day and our outstanding production crew with you in Greensboro. Harden deep in the shot clock. It doesn't I mean, matter. She has been so good in this tournament. She gets right to the logo in the middle of that zone. That's the playmaking spot, and she's capable. She's got six points. Got to double digits against Duke yesterday. They work it inside, and they get the layup. Good passing. Verhulst finishes it off. That's what happens when you advance the ball and you don't dribble it all the time. Good spacing to make that play happen by Louisville in transition. First points for the freshman, Verhulst from DeSoto, Kansas. Williams on the dribble and double teamed. Area Vets from the wing. Cards have made three of their last four shots after struggling, making just three of their first 12 prior to that. That's for three from Hall. Yeah, when, when in doubt, and you double clutch a little. Look at the middle of the floor where the ACC logo is. That's where Harden is living right now. Does a nice job of getting inside. Good timing on her flash. And then good spacing and running the floor. Verholz doing a nice job of getting all the way to the rim. Louisville's just one of six on three-pointers. They'll go to the rim and score. And the drive from Smith. is Harden knocking down a three ball. Oh, we don't need no stinking preseason or any non-conference. We just need to get primed for the postseason. That's what all players and teams build toward. This to be Harden showing us that in this event. Harden made just 10 threes all season. Drive and bucket all. Marshall back in with her two personal fouls. Missed from the corner. Foul goes against Louisville. Out of the double team. Good ball movement. Chelsea Hall crosses him up, gets high off the glass. Nine points for Harden, connecting on a three just a moment ago. She's four of seven from the floor. A couple of rebounds as well. Marshall beats the count. 
Gets it right back for three. It might have been Harden. A little bit of a push. That's her first. Yeah, that's the first shot for Kelsey Marshall. You see the push off on the weak side. Kelsey Marshall's only taken one shot, and that was a three that she likes on her own shot chart. I think she's rushed because Louisville's doing such a good job on her. Guards have made five of their last seven shots. This is Hall lining up three. Cochran preserves the possession. It's like another three fan lift is in there. Two Miami players fighting for the loose ball, and Bondu and Harden are foul in the backcourt. Van Lith and Engstler in the vicinity. Now the conversation ensues with Polani Spurlock Welsh. That's not a good foul for uh, Haley Van Lith to pick up that far away from the bucket. She's not, Harden. I mean, she's not going to pick it up. Engstler got Engstler that got, one. Okay, yep. it's not a good foul yep. for her either. <laughs> Harden did a good job of, of staying strong and stepping through that trap to be able to draw that foul. Sticking in that zone. Turn around. Pendande. Uh, Pendande Pendande with the turnaround. Miami doing a good job of being patient and getting the ball to the middle of the floor. It's a couple of buckets on, on the logo. Hall around the edge. Drop the glass and good. That's what Chelsea Hall can do. Instead of spotting up the three, she needs to look to probe and attack, get a piece of the paint, make a play. She's got 11 points after scoring 10 in the regular season victory by three in Coral Gables in their lone regular season meeting. And Dande, Johnson City Baba. Oh, twisting shot. Ben Lift comes up with it. Miss entry deflected away into Marshall. And Dande trying to establish position, muscles it up. Engstler grabs it. Cochran on the block. And Dande with a grab and a foul. Well, Destiny Harden had a big night last night, and she started right where she left off here in the first. Four for seven from the floor. She's already got nine points in 10 minutes of play. John Foy and Associates. Inside the Greensboro Coliseum, the 45th ACC Women's Basketball Tournament, and a six-point lead for the Louisville Cardinals. Chelsea Hall doing damage in the first half for Louisville. Well, she's been aggressive. She's been opportunistic. Four for six from the floor. She is one for three from the three-point line. That's not her game. Her game is driving and dishing and getting inside the defense, getting a piece of the paint, probing. It's a great take right here. Transfer from Vanderbilt. She's had a really good game season on top of the floor for Louisville. Averages about six and a half points per game. Look what she's done tonight with the 11. Four of six from the floor. She's made a three as well as we get more from Tabitha. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Well, Katie Meyer got in her huddle and told her team, listen, we're not playing that organized and we're still playing pretty well. And she goes, and if Chelsea Hall gets another layup without someone shooting the gap, I know something. Tom? Oh, yeah, she knows something, all right. Great report from the huddle. Down. Katie Meyer will give it to you straight. Well, no question about it. It depends on, you know, like on the strong side drives, if it's a shooter in the corner, I know Coach Meyer's not going to help off that. So you've got to guard your own. It's what I said before in the beginning of the game. If, if Miami guards continue to put pressure on the back line defensively of their team, they're going to get their front line in foul trouble, and that's not going to be good for Miami. 
Canes left after the second round of last year's tournament, losing to Virginia Tech, 72-64. That's a program that's on to the semifinals for the first time in program history as Kenny Brooks leads them into the semis against NC State. Those two teams met on the last day of the regular season and went right down to the wire with the Pack winning it in Blacksburg. Ten on the shot clock for Miami. Charlie Tomby regathers. Two on the shot clock. Williams pulls up and beats it. I think it. she got it off. They're going to count it. First they are basket. Review it. You review it on a dead ball. She traveled. Seventh turnover for Louisville. This is what you call time management right here. Good clock awareness. Yeah, I think she got it off. Williams was the second leading scorer during the regular season for Miami. She is now in the box score, beating the clock. About to cross the four minute threshold of our second quarter. Game number three. Quarterfinals on a Friday in Greensboro. Shot clock's inside of 10. And Bondu. Weak side fight Harden. Angsler scoops it up. Last season, Louisville all the way to the finals and a two-point loss in the championship game against NC State. That's Van Lift. I like the play call, though, to invert your guards to the block. Most guards don't like playing post defense. Miami kept it alive. Marshall off one foot. I mean, if we're keeping a shot, in, a shot chart right now, Miami's had several buckets in the middle of the floor. And that Louisville defense is designed to keep the ball out of that part of the floor. First basket for Kelsey Marshall. Van Lith, contact with C.D. Baba. She hit the floor for Miami. Kelsey Marshall missed her first shot. It was a three on a handoff on an out-of-bounds play, but this time she does a nice job of getting inside. Van Lith. Leading score on the season for Louisville. At the free throw line this year, 77%. Free throws for Van Lift, up to four points now, 29-24. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. And Bondu tried to race it down, still trying to grab it and fend off the defender. Williams. Smith trying to work on a Cochran screen. The one thing you don't see the Louisville players do is put the ball over their head when they catch it. They're all catching in triple threat. Look at that rebound by Angsler. Couldn't finish it off. Harden saves it on the baseline. And Bondu showing off the dribbling skills and bumped by Cochran on the way into the front court. First on Cochran. Angsler's 0 for 3 from the floor, although that last shot had some degree of difficulty to it. You saw her season average of 11.6, third best on the team behind Kiana Smith and Haley Van Lift. Traveling on Marshall. Bit of a quizzical look. Ninth turnover against the Canes. It's a dead ball, and you can set your D. She goes to the bench after a brief conversation with Katie Meyer. Only two losses in ACC play in the regular season for Louisville. Big box out underneath and the foul's gonna go against Miami.
first on Mbandu. Just inside of two minutes to go in the second quarter. Out of bounds and back to Miami. That's the eighth turnover of yeah, the half. A little sloppy. I mean, both teams. The game has really slowed down right here. This is to Miami's advantage, though. The game can slow down, right? They don't want to be sped up. They don't want a, a, a high-possession game. This is a Louisville team that averages close to 73 points per game, fourth best of the ACC. Right now they've got a five-point advantage. Late. They've led most of the way. Miami had a 6-5 lead early on. That's Exler reaching out and grabbing that one. Travel turns it right back. Jeff Walls yelling at his team to slow down. That's now nine turnovers. That's usually what they do to the other team. They cause about 19 turnovers per game, second best in the league. They have five points off nine Miami turnovers, but they're equal in turnovers, and usually Louisville's plus, plus five is their turnover margin. Yep. Marshall missed out of the corner. We'll stay here. 107 on the clock. Kelsey Marshall has missed two corner threes. She usually makes those. That's her spot over there. Kelsey Marshall has 314 career yeah. three pointers. <laughs> well, anywhere behind That's the her spot. That's the best in Miami women's basketball history as Anxler goes to the bench. Marshall made one yesterday in the win against two. This is Harden. She's got nine points, leading score in the first half for Miami. Shot clock's at three. Marshall tried to go behind the back, lost the handle. Miami recovers Williams. And Bondu is wide open. What a break for Miami, because that was a change of possession. And they got a bucket at it, even though they had nothing working on, off the shot clock. Six points now for Mbandu. Robinson traveling. Ten turnovers, first half, Louisville. Mikasa Robinson gets pokes it free, but then Jalea Williams stays after it and finds Mbandu uh, under the basket. So Mbandu, who averaged three and a half points per game in the regular season, has six in the quarters against Louisville. Williams. Jumper. Van Lith. Harden with the foul, you know trying what? to chase down Van Lith. That is probably a good foul, only because it keeps the layup. But Miami isn't, or, or Louisville is in the bonus. It's also the second foul on Harden. Haley Van Lith. I'm sure Harden was thinking, you know, let, let's make her earn it at the line. No layups. This might be a no layup game anymore. You heard Tabitha's report from Katie Meyer about Chelsea Hall's layups. Exler's going to come back in for the final two seconds. By the way, Louisville is 21 and 2 with the halftime lead this season, and there are 25 victories. Miami will just run out the clock. 31-26. Chelsea Hall is the only player in our game to get to double digits with 11 on four of six shooting and a three-pointer. Exler held scoreless. And for Miami, Harden had nine. Let's go to Tabitha.
Coach, three-point shooting for your team, a bit of a struggle early. You had some, some success, excuse me, on the inside. What more do you want to see offensively from your team? Well, we're going to have to go inside out. We've got to put the ball on the, bat, on the ground to try to create some easy baskets. And then we've got to make some shots. We've had really good looks. They're just not going in. Uh, rebounding, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. But then our turnovers. We're having way too many unforced turnovers. It's hard to score when you're throwing the ball to the other team. A little bit uncharacteristic for your squad. How do you clean up those turnovers? Well, there's a wonderful thing called the bench. You know, so if we can't clean it up out there themselves, then they can come over here and enjoy a nice padded seat. Well said, Coach. Thanks. Good cool. luck in a second. Okay, wonderful's in the eye of the beholder, by the way. We'll see what happens in the second half. Jeff Wall's team turned it over 11 times. Miami scored just two points off of those turnovers. Halftime in Greensboro at the ACC Women's Tournament. Miami and Louisville. Knows that her squad likes to make you play ugly. They want to turn you over, and it's working against the Cardinals today. They've got to clean up those turnovers if Jeff Walls and his squad want to win this one. But again, he already said it. The bench is going to be the place that the players are going to be if they keep committing those turnovers. That was a firm comment from Coach Walls in your post-half conversation. Let's catch you up on everything that's happened earlier today. A classic quarterfinal that began disappointingly for Virginia Tech. The ACC Player of the Year, Elizabeth Kitley, got hurt. But late in the game, it was tied until Georgia Amor's three-point play made it 69-66. Final seconds, Eva Hodgson ties it. And overtime beckons between the Tar Heels and the Hokies, at which point Asia Shepard. Love day. Asia Shepard carrying the Hokies to an overtime win. Kenny Brooks after the game. Well, you know, even before that, you know, we, we were down two of our best defensive players, two of our starters, uh, main pieces to our puzzle. And uh, we told them, I said, look, we're going to win the game. All right, it's got to be different. We got to win the game. And I told her, I said, look, you're the best player on the floor. Take it over. I mean, when you love and you care for your team, that it just comes naturally. And I think we all pulled together. We fought. We had Kayla King out. We had Liz out. And that was a big loss. And the group we had on the floor, we just never gave up. We did it for each other. Love that Ballarat, Australia accent. 22 for Amor. Meanwhile, Kinane had 15 at halftime in our second semifinal. Elisa Kinane, a year ago, the ACC tournament MVP, carrying the Wolfpack back into the semifinals with just a dominant performance against Florida State. Seminoles should be in the tournament. Big win over Boston College in the second round yesterday, but the Wolfpack were too much, and Wes Moore back in the semifinals. I love threes now as much as anybody, but you got to have a good balance, go inside out. And I thought we did a good job attacking the rim, getting it inside of the post or getting, getting our own. And then obviously, as you mentioned, able to kick it out and share it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you see every game, another person is showing up, you know. When we went so deep tonight and everybody's able to score, everyone's able to play defense. So it's just what's led us here and it's going to continue us in the postseason. A look at the bracket, noontime tomorrow, Virginia Tech and NC State. Still two semifinal spots to be filled. Now, a piece of history for you, Tabitha. The lowest seed to ever win an ACC tournament was the fifth seed. It happened in 1984 and 1986. A little trivia, guess who won the title in 85? Debbie Antonelli with NC State. Oh, but wow. the five seed has won the title before. Can Virginia Tech, despite the injuries, battle NC State tomorrow and be competitive? I mean, after today's performance, I will say yes. Uh, Kenny Brooks found a way, his squad found a way. Both of these squads, NC State and Virginia Tech, so deep. They've got so many weapons, at least eight or nine different players. And Virginia Tech is going to be really important. They're two men down. Who knows if Kayla King and, and them can come, can come back, excuse me. Um, but again, two deep teams. I'm expecting a battle tomorrow. Kenny Brooks told us he's not expecting them back. So he's going to have to fight without those two-star players. But do not sleep on Virginia Tech. They've still got a lot of pieces to compete with NC State. Obviously, Shepard and Amor, but Kayana Trailer, Emily Lytle, they're bucket getters as well, coming off the bench during the season for the Hokies. Cardinals trying to sew up their spot in the semis, up five at the half. Brother up the driveway. The new Spicy Lover's Pizza from Pizza Hut. It packs the perfect punch with spicy marinara, sliced red chilies, and fiery flavor.
unlimited cashback match only from Discover. Yeah, giving Miami a little bit of problems right now. I mean, Katie Meyer told her squad, listen, if she gets one more layup to the rim, they're going to be in some trouble. Chelsea Hall taking over for this game because Van Lip and Inksler kind of quiet in this one, carrying the load for Louisville. 11 points in 17 minutes for Hall. The Cardinals have the five-point lead despite shooting just 33%, just one for 10 from three. They're plus nine on the boards, and really that's why they're up in the, in the ballgame. Yeah, the, the men look to attack off the bounce. They still Stayed in zone for a long time in the first half. I'd expect them to pick up their pressure here. And that means Miami better be ready to go back door. You heard Coach Meyer mention to Tabitha the short corner. That means trying to get behind that defense. Van Lith had six points, four of four from the free throw line. Five points for Liz Dixon. Cochran demands the basketball and hits the turnaround. Look at that footwork inside. How many sides was that? A couple of sides and then you go inside. Five points for Cochran. Area vets on the handle. Then lift defending. Area vets drew the double. Engsler deflects it out of bounds for Louisville. Miami advancing to the quarters with the win yesterday against Duke. 61-55. That was just the second time those programs had met in the tournament. The first time, Miami came away with a victory after losing in the semis to Duke back in 2017. Williams pulls up. It's Louisville in their man-to-man -man defense, and it's a great job by Williams to not over-penetrate and use that bounce to power into her jump shot. Second foul on Hall, puts Williams at the free throw line, just two points in the first half. And these are first free throw attempts of the game. In fact, Miami in the first half, two of two from the line. So limited trips for the Canes. Louisville was 12 of 14 in the first half from the line. They put a lot of pressure on that back row of Miami. Five-point game. Van Lith stumbles. She hit the court hard. She is down behind the play. Area vets open for three. Van Lith trying to rejoin the fray and gets back into the play. But she hit the court hard and awkwardly. And Dunde, sweet move. Wow. Coach Meyer is right. Destiny Harden and, and Bondu and Pendande are doing some work out there. Their guards have not yet come alive. Six points for Lola Pendande, the junior from Almeria, Spain. Three-point game. Exler makes it a six-point game with her first points of the evening. The senior, Exler, the leading rebounder on the team, providing some points in the third quarter. Harden had a step. Williams follow. That was a great pass, leading Harden right to the basket. Good follow by Williams. Haley Van Lith trying to pass the ball. Well, she's falling, and she hit her face really hard on the ground. Unfortunately, we saw that yesterday with the Relic Bai in the first round of their game, the first half, rather, of their game against Wake Forest, and she was unable to return. You can just feel the intensity of this one, right? I mean, both, both teams playing so hard. That'll be our second game tonight. Notre Dame and Georgia Tech as the Jackets advance with a five-point win against Wake yesterday in the second round. First taste of the tournament for Notre Dame, the number three seed. That bounces out and Bondu in the right place at the right time. And Dande and Anxler fighting on the interior. That's a foot fight for position. The pass just a bit too far. 
from Williams. It's a turnover, number 11 in the game for Miami. It's for Mosa and her teammates, and there's Kubai signing an autograph. And again, we're waiting on, it's going to be a game time decision. The reports that we're getting so far, but you can see she's got the bandage on the chin. She hit her chin in the first half and could not return to the game. Boy, they really need her. I mean, that's the two-time defensive player in the ACC. And the top rebounder in the conference as well as Van Lith misfires. And I think the best screener. They even have a package for her on the top of the floor to run offense as the initiator. Captain of the all-screen team, Debbie? Yes. And Bunder got tied up. For years, captain of the all-screen team. <laughs> Deanna Smith came away with it. Four-point game. Smith's jumper is true. She's got four. Redshirt senior for the cards is Kelsey Marshall in a high traffic area. Miami being a lot more deliberate, more patient, running through their sets, and they've gotten a couple of offensive rebounds. Williams stop and start. Knocked away. Van Lith. Two on two. Engsler joins the party. Pass was deflected. Engsler is open. It's a three. And she hits another one. Second Engsler three of the quarter. Katie Meyer wanted to travel. The officiating crew did not concur. Emily Engsler starting to come alive here in the second. Back to back triples for her from the right wing. Of course, in Miami to a timeout. Until you are. How bizarre. No annual fee on any Discover card. And for them, if they could knock off NC State, but the way NC State rolled, 30 point win over Florida State. They were clicking in all facets of the game, and that's exactly the way you want to roll out in the tournament. They did it against Carolina in overtime. Game struggling recently. Trying to avoid another turnover here with the shot clock inside of 10. Dangerous pass from Pendande. To both coaches switching it up. I, th I think I saw a tip of the hat by Katie Meyer to that last defensive effort by Louisville just because it, it was an element of surprise. And left, no surprise, right down the lane. Eight points. There you vets. Miami two of seven on three pointers. And Bondu steps behind the line and knocks it down. She's got nine points. I mean, if Mbandu is going to start knocking down triples, I mean, the zone is designed to protect inside out. I think you'd make, uh, have to hit another one before you adjust it. Mbandu made just four threes during the regular season, Tabitha. Well, Tom, Debbie, I get the sense that both coaches are just trying to calm their teams down. The first total, Katie Meyer, surprisingly, came over calm and just said, listen, guys, we've got to move the ball around. That's why we're not getting scores in the middle. And same thing with Jeff Walls. He sat down and he just told his ladies, look, relax. We got this and sent them back out to play. Well, you got to project confidence and calmness, which both of these coaches do pretty well. They get excited once in a while, but who doesn't? Just like the broadcasters and the players. Engsler trying to follow her own miss. Aryavets tried to tie her up. They're pointing at the Louisville bench, and the timeout was granted to Louisville. Eight point difference, 4.09 to go in the third. Now, time for our. Coyote Tractor turning point it involves Emily Engsler and her three-point shooting in the second half. Well, maybe a few words of constructive criticism on the way to the locker room. One of the leaders making sure she gets in there ahead of him and lets him know what's what. And then she steps out here in the third quarter and knocks down back-to-back -back triples to help Louisville separate from what was a one-possession game. Three of 13 as a team from beyond 22 feet one and three quarter inches away. 
Engsler missed both of her three point attempts in the first half. Robinson on the inbounds. Engsler right to the rim. Tried to put it up there for Dixon. Foul against Miami. Jal de Tapti is 33. Did they give it to him, Bondi? I mean, the catch was behind the backboard. I'm not sure there's much he would have been able to do with that catch anyway. That's an unfortunate one for Miami. Yeah, we're still trying to determine who the foul was on. They're going to give it to Jaldi Tati. That's her first. It's that ghost screen. Smith. Boy, that is beautiful. That is excellent ball movement. With a beautiful stroke by Kiana Smith. She's got seven points on three of nine shooting after that jumper. She's going to get drafted. I mean, she's a WNBA player. How did Robinson not deflect that pass? Jaldi Tabdi, tough catch. Into the corner. Off of Miami. But there's the ghost screen. It's like a pass through. It's trying to confuse the switching defense. Piece of the paint by Mikasa Robinson and a beautiful stroke by Kiana Smith. So Louisville up to 41% as a team shooting. They went just one of 10 from three point distance in the first half. They are three of four this quarter on three point attempts. Haley Lith plays the game low to high as well as any guard in the country. If you watch her, she dribbles below her waist. She's always cutting hard. She never puts the ball above her head. Turn around Dixon and foul. Just that whole, that whole sequence right there. The feed to the post, the relocation on the perimeter. It's all good basketball plays, winning plays. I mean, this Louisville team has a change of pace, not just individually as players, but uh, offensively, collectively. You know, because sometimes they cut hard through the paint and they drag defenders with them. They understand the value of that. Kelsey Marshall picked up that last foul. That's three on Marshall, and she is on the Katie Meyer bench. Well, Louisville can frustrate a leading scorer. They have done that in the past. I mean, their defense has held a couple of All-Americans well below their scoring. Ryan Howard at Kentucky only had nine points against this D. Nas Hillman from Michigan only had 12 points against this defense. And Marshall's got only two, and she's a spectator right now with the Cards enjoying their largest lead of the ball game, and the shot clock's at 10 for Miami. The zone makes you hesitate and makes you think. The multiple looks defensively. Harden had to shoot it, and she rips the ropes Come on, for Destiny. the Hurricanes. Dusty Harden, go ahead and shoot till your arm falls off. <laughs> Where is the tape measure? Way behind the line for Harden and 12 points. Smith with the answer from the corner in front of her own bench, and she's got 10. Punch. Counter punch. Counter punch. You beat me to the punch, Debbie. <laughs> Inside of two minutes to go in the quarter. Williams, hard dribble. Once again, deep into the shot clock area. That's quick glance. Pardon, can she do it again? Traveled. Destiny Harden looks at the clock, shows the ball. That's a contested deep three. Kiana Smith was there on the catch. And then this is why you run the floor hard and wide and you make sure you keep your feet inside those 17 panels down there in the corner between the sideline and the three point line. Kiana Smith was 0 for 4 on three point attempts in the first half. Knocking that one down, foul on the play. Heavy contact under the basket. That's Dixon.
Area vets on the inbounds. Dixon had the block on Gray. Size differential exploited by Dixon. Minute and a half to go in the quarter. After leading by five. Cards up by 12. All that misdirection really hard to guard. Hank's first pass was deflected. I mean, there's no chance of that pass getting in there. Gray with some sleight of hand. Here's Williams. That's a three. She knew it was offline. Tried to follow it. Touchdown pass. Hank's with a catch and a scoop. And it'll fall. 50 seconds to go in the quarter. Guards have made their last three shots. Gray tees it up. Angular rebound and Bandu. Aryavets with the reload. Last shot here in the quarter. They're running a play called Miami. Ten seconds on the game clock. Smith just rolled off. Miami missed its last five field goal attempts, and it's 52-38 to the fourth dip. You got to run ahead of the basketball. Look at this footwork. One, two, scoop by Angsler. This is beautiful. She's happy. Shot clock's at five for Gray. And Grande over the top, had it taken away. Miami's had to deal with a lot of late clocks, and you can give Louisville's defense credit for some of that. Hall with the basketball. Trying to work on area vets. Pendande came over to help. Hall hit the deck, and a foul is called. You've got to make her see orange in the gap because she is driving hard with that right hand and we already heard coach meyer talk about trying to keep her out of make the driving right making a layup there you that's picked up the foul for miami let's check in with tabitha really right and Debbie, you're absolutely right. Katie Meyer told her squad that when she told them if Chelsea Hall gets another layup, I know something. She said she's just putting the ball on her right hip and driving to the basic, to the basket, excuse me. You've got to force her left and not give her her strong hand. Well, when you have a shooter in the corner, you can't help. So you've got to guard her and make her go left. Can't let her get going downhill on that lane line. Marshall off the mark. Just two points for Kelsey Marshall. Averages over 14 per game as area vets goes to the Miami bench. Marshall's ninth in the conference in scoring. Not tonight so far. As we play into the fourth, so glad that you're with us for the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. The 45th edition and the 22nd time being contested here in the great city of Greensboro, North Carolina. Ball. Change of direction. Sharply. Foul was called on the loose ball. Looks like Chelsea Hall picks that up, her third. Well, she had to go left. She missed a runner. Put that in your analytics, Tommy. <laughs> Is there a possible recipe, Debbie, in your estimation for a comeback out of the Canes here? Well, I, I think, you know, they got to score. They can't have empty possessions. Maybe getting to the free throw line would help. And as good as Louisville is at controlling the tempo of the game with their defense, they're pretty good on this end of the floor as well when they move the ball. Miami's thinking about the three-point shot. They are 4-15 in the game. And 
Bondu, she's already made a three. She's made another one. Come on. She made four in the regular season. We could use a little of that. In the regular season, Naomi Mbandu was four of 25 from three-point distance and 16%. See, now, if you can get three stops in a row and score and put some game pressure on Louisville, there's one stop. Mbandu's got 12 points. That's a season high. I mean, they're leaving her open because they don't believe that she's going to make them. I mean, she hasn't proven she could do it in the past. That's part of your scout, right? There's a reason why you're open. Well, now she's made two. It's not a lie if you believe it, and Mbandu is believing in that three-point shot. Williams thought about a three. She's thinking about I it. I want her to shoot that. <laughs> She's thinking about it. Why not? How about an easy two? And Donde trying to get it back. Wow. And Donde exasperated. One foot from the rim. She makes that shot 99 times out of 100. That would have cut it to an 11 point game. Every point precious for the Canes right now. And for Louisville for that matter, Deb. Gray. Three! Picking up full court pressure. This is what you want to do is put some game pressure on Louisville. Got to get another stop. Bondu and Gray with three pointers. Now six made as a team for Miami. Hold on here. Ten point game. Van Lift cut off by the defending of Williams. Entry pass. Saved on the baseline. And right before the end of the shot clock, Verhulst for Louisville. I mean, they got three sides. Miami got a deflection. And Louisville ends up with a triple on that. Verhulst with five points. 6.20 to go in regulation. Mbondu. Van Lith had it knocked away. Canes are going down swinging one way or the other in the final six minutes. Intercepted, knocked away Louisville. That's what they do. They turn over the opposition. Miami now with 17 turnovers in the game. Cochran. Oh, look at that move. Sequence of wow. moves. Wow. Moves on top of moves. That was quick. Cards with 15 points off of those Miami turnovers. Timeout taken. Miami took it. These are the kind of plays you got to have. Go your way when you want to win a championship. The hustle right here. The clock awareness. Get your feet behind the line, young freshman, and knock it down. And then watch this deep bury and the counter and the footwork and the finish. Five. Infused with nourishing serum and pro vitamin B5, new Nivea sensitive and radiant lotion. Team points, four of seven shooting and a three pointer to her credit. What a first half. I mean, Chelsea Hall helped set the tempo on the offensive end. She was aggressive off the bounce. Got to the free throw line. And Put she some is. Pressure. Put some pressure on that yeah. back row. She is tonight's Hardy's star to watch. With those 13 points. She and Smith are into double digits. Kiana Smith has 10. Two players from Miami have double digits as well. The Bondu and Harden both have 12. So you're all caught up. 
Well, we have a moment. Let's check in with Tabitha Turner-Wilkins. Well, thanks, Tom. Jeff Walls trying to get his team to play smart. He said, I need smarts. Any loose balls got to be strong and reel them in. And he goes, no live turnovers. Call a timeout. We've got three. And he goes on to say defensively, make him use 20 to 25 seconds of the shot clock, force him to take a bad shot. Well, that's part of what their defense is designed to do. I can't wait to see what they've charted over there on late shot clocks by Miami because they've been very successful taking Miami deep into the shot clock. Closing in on five minutes to go in regulation. Van Lift. Trying to fake out Harden. I mean, look at get hips and shoulders past the defender and get into the paint. Traveling violation. 17 turnovers for Louisville. When the teams met in the regular season, Louisville turned over Miami 17 times and got 19 points off of those turnovers. Similar story tonight. That game in the regular season was early February in Coral Gables in a three-point win for Louisville on the road. Another turnover. We got it. Williams. Julia Williams is just a freshman. Boy, she has been. She's gotten better as the season has gone on. She's got a lot to build on. Cards break the pressure for the moment. Smith missed. Aryavets brings it up. That might have been too quick. Harden straight away. That's a three. Destiny Harden. 15 points. You got to pick up full court pressure again. Down to 10. Run down by Robinson. That was a close call on the sideline. You want to use some clock here. Move the ball. He's got to call timeout because he's upset with his team not moving the ball and taking quick shots. Destiny Harden trailing on this play in transition. Nobody matches up. Miscommunication. This is the kind of game pressure I'm talking about. Now you got Louisville thinking, forcing Coach Walls to have to call a timeout. This is a teaching moment for his team, but the game's not over. Harden's got three three-pointers in the game. Miami is seven of 19 as a team from the three-point airspace. Still got two timeouts left if you're Louisville, just one for Miami. Jeff Walls was trying to get his team's attention. Let's see if he succeeded. Yeah. Most of the time, he does. He's gonna put Narika Kono in. She has not been in the game yet. She's number 11 in white. Miami going to trap, changing their defense. Ten on the shot clock for Van Lith and Louisville. Deflected away. Pendande, outlet, Harden. Smith hustles back. Harden beats her to the rim. Eight-point game, Tommy. That's the kind of game pressure I'm talking about. 17 points for Harden. When you make Louisville hesitate, take away some of their aggression. Now Coach Walls has got him thinking about what a good shot is. Season high in point production for Harden with the 17. Shot clock's at seven for Van Lish. She'll cross it over into the teeth of the Miami D. It rolls out of bounds. I think that went off the, the foot. You can't review it. We're not inside two minutes yet. They're going to give it to Louisville. Mark Resch and Rod Creech were right there to make the call. I thought it went off the back of... Not. Either way, very, very close. Then Liv, but Dande in the vicinity and only three on the shot clock. Smith got it away. Angsler the rebound. That's a big rebound. 
She's got nine rebounds in the game. Smith, Engsler. Robinson missed it, Harden got it. Inside of two and a half minutes to go in regulation, here comes Marshall. There are your vets. Into Harden, the feed in the bucket. 19 points for Harden. She leads everybody, and it's a two possession game. Smith backs up, halfway down and out. Got to push. You got plenty of time here. Marshall. Williams. Weak side, and it's Smith. Took it away from Harden. Same situation right here. Keep him in front. Make sure you rebound. Louisville's got to move the ball. Two timeouts for the cards. Unlike Cochran on a post up. One for Miami. Paul. Has two defenders too strong. Harden up for the board. This is where your execution, all your practice, everything you come into and work on. Look at Harden to the bucket with a foul. What a battle by Miami. 21 points for Destiny Harden. Look at the fight to post by Harden. And then look at this, fake the handoff, turn the corner. What a tournament by Destiny Harden. See, Engsler thinks that there's going to be a switch. It's a smart read by Destiny. She has not been to the free throw line tonight. 67% of the season looked pretty good right there. One possession game. 22 points for Harden. And a minute to go in regulation. Cochran had it knocked away. Marshall whistled for the foul. That's okay because that's only the second team foul. Marshall's got four personals now. Each team with two fouls on the quarter. Yes. Miami's got to worry about a stop and a rebound. What a comeback from the Canes. Trailed by as many as 16 in this quarter. Cochran right down the lane. Offensive foul. I mean, when you see a big start their dribble from the top of the floor, you have to draw a charge. She outside the restricted area. The play starts outside the lower defensive box. Marshall's got it at one point in the quarter, Debbie. It was 54 to 38 Louisville. Harden to tie it. She's tied the game. 25 points, 59 all. Time out Louisville. in the last five possessions. And Destiny Harden. How about Miami running her off the flare? Because she's a three-point shooter now. Tremendous. And the, the downfall of this little slide right here all started for Louisville when Alana Smith took that quick three. And Jeff Walls called a timeout because his team wasn't playing time and score. Remember, this was a three-point game when these two teams met last time. Louisville winning by a possession. The lead in 
this quarter for Louisville was 16. So Miami, Miami's got fouls to give here. So we've got one. Excuse me, two. I might consider it. Bringing the ball up the floor, yeah. I might make them keep inbounding it. And if you're Louisville, you're going to try to take the last shot. I'm so, I think they're going to go with like eight or nine and try to offensive rebound. Destiny Harden has 25 points, four three-pointers. She had 10 made threes all season. 59 all. There's only about a second difference, game and shot. Van Lith on the dribble. Game clock's at 10. Van Lith off the Cochran screen. Pendante defending. Williams trying to tie her up. No more timeouts. Shot clock violation. Now you got to go look and see about time because maybe a few seconds went off or a, little, a few tenths of a second went off. It looked like Coach Walls wanted a foul right in front of the bench. Louisville did have a timeout left. He did. Either he wanted the foul or they weren't granted the timeout. I think they're going to look about time on the clock, which is going to give Katie Meyer. She's going to call her last timeout. They are calling it a shot clock violation, Debbie, just to confirm. And right now, 1.8 seconds on the clock. It deserves repeating. Miami trail by 16 points. So they are going to put 0.5 back on the clock for 1.7. So if you're Miami right now, you're looking for a direct pass into the paint to the post. You got time to catch. You got time for maybe two actions, a catch and a dribble, but you've got to have to look to score quickly. So the clock's been adjusted by a tenth of a second. 1.7 seconds to go. The last Miami lead, as we're tied at 59, was 6-5 to five in the first quarter. The steal by Williams. The transition three by Harden. Miami got in lockdown mode. A 15-0 run over the last four minutes and 28 seconds. Debbie, to further layer that, at the 9.15 mark of the fourth quarter, it was 54 to 38. Right now, we're tied, 59 all, 1.7 on the clock, and Harden had a big part of it. Well, Miami's made six of their last seven shots. I'm looking for a direct pass. Liz Dixon's going to be in the game to be on the ball to put some size on the basketball. Louisville's got to switch on everything. 1.7. You've got time to catch. Look for De Mikasa Robinson on Harden. Marshall inbounds it. She gets it to Harden. That's for the win. It's over!